the Vauxhall Mocha. Now I'll make no bones about this. It's a car that I hated actually. I didn't like the way it drove. I especially didn't like the way it looked. And all of this had nothing to do with the fact that I was actually banned from driving the Vauxhall Mocha. In fact, I was banned from driving all of Vauxhalls for a small period of time in the early 2010s. However, Vauxhall has obviously been listening to some of the critics because this amazingly, is the new Vauxhall Mocha. And it shares nothing in comparison with the previous Mocha, apart from its name. You can buy as a petrol or as a diesel, or in this case, as a pure electric. Now in this video, I'm gonna give you a full walk around the car. We're gonna look at the styling. We're gonna talk about the trims and the options. We're gonna look inside as well. And then I'm gonna take it for a quick test drive. But before we dive into that, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you've got any questions, do drop them in the comments box below. Right then, let's get into it. So this is it then, and I mean, it's the styling where this car really does differ from the previous car, which let's face it, I always thought looked quite blobby, badly proportioned, but this car is sharp and very, very svelte. Now let's talk about this front end. Um, now we first saw this front end on the Vauxhall concept car. It was a Vauxhall GTX Experimental. And Vauxhall have just carried that nose over lock, stock and barrel to their new range of Vauxhalls. And uh, this is the first one to get it. Um, and it looks brilliant. Now you get these day running lights, which uh, also become the indicators when you switch them on. You get LED lights as standard. The, uh, the top spec cars get matrix LED lights. This is a gloss black panel. And it reminds me of something like the uh, Opal Manta actually. It's got a really good bluff front end to it and it looks quite aggressive. We've even got proper air inlets here and they actually go through. They're not just uh, fake, they're actually real. And the front end just look, well, it looks like nothing else on the road. Now you can actually have this car with a black bonnet if you wish to match the black roof. Um, that really does give this car a 1970s look about it. Um, now in terms of what's underneath, now this car is based, well it's, it's mechanically identical to the Peugeot E2008 and the DS3 uh, crossback E-Tents. Um, you get the same motor as well, 134 brake horsepower electric motor that powers the front wheels. Um, the battery is a 50 kilowatt hour one, uh, it's 50 kilowatt hour battery. Um, and, uh, but when we take this car on the road, it actually differs. It seems to differ quite a bit from the Peugeot actually. But let's just keep looking at the styling. Now, this car is um, one down from the top spec. So it's got quite a lot of chrome on it, very nice. You can uh, mix things up by going for the SRI Nav Premium, which gives a sportier look. It gives black badges. So the Vauxhall badge at the front becomes black. So uh, if you really want to uh, disguise the fact this is a Vauxhall, you can go for the SRI Nav and the badges at the back are black as well. And that car gets um, a red, bit of detailing here. We've got chrome um, here and uh, it's a really nice design actually. I mean we first saw this little design feature on the Vauxhall Adam and it just reminds me, now stick with me here, I know it sounds a bit odd to say this but it reminds me of a pram like those proper um, children's prams and it gives this car a really nice um, distinctive look about it and uh, Let's just look at the back end because this car's really got some presence. Now, unlike a lot of SUVs, well, small SUVs these days, small crossovers, they're just hatchbacks that are raised off the road a little bit. Things like the Ford Puma, but this really does look like a small little SUV. It looks nice and chunky. And um, now every car gets LED rear lights as well. Really super thin, looks really, really good. And yet the back end, it just has got a lot of presence. Very squat on the road is, the, is this car. I'd actually say, I'd actually go as far as saying this is the best looking Vauxhall since the 90s. Things like the Calibra and the Tigra. Uh, strong words, I know, but I think this is one fantastic looking car. Um, this is an optional paint color, Mamba Green, and I think it really does give this car 
a really distinctive look. So yeah, I am a big fan of the way it looks. Right, this is an electric car, so we've got to talk about charging. Now the charging port is here. It's, unsurprisingly, it's mounted in the same place as you find on the Peugeot E 2008. Open it up and you get a, your usual, really, you get a connect, type two connector here. And if you pull this little plug out, you've got your CCS connector there as well. Now in terms of charging times, now if you plug this car into a home wall box, a seven kilowatt home wall box, you're looking at just over seven hours. And if you plug this car into a rapid charger, a hundred kilowatt rapid charger, a zero to 80% charge takes around 30 minutes. Now, one feature, because this car is part of Stellantis, which own Peugeot, Citroen, Vauxhall, Alfa Romeo, etc., etc., this car shares a lot of technology with Peugeots and Citroens, predominantly the Peugeot E2008, and it features that this car's really nifty little function here. Now, this car you can set a program, you can set the timer. So for instance, if you get home of an evening and you want to put the car on charge, but you don't actually want the car to charge immediately. For instance, let's say you get home at six o'clock at night, but you know that you get a cheaper energy tariff at 1 a.m. in the morning. You can go into the car's computer, set the car so that um, it charges at 1 a.m. You can plug the car in immediately. You press this little button here with a little clock on, and then this car will start charging at the, uh, the programmable time. So it's fantastic if it's convenient for you to plug the car in immediately when you get home, but you know that you get the cheapest energy tariff in the early hours of the morning. So the interior then, and Vauxhall haven't run out of design energy when it comes to the interior. They haven't used all of their creativity on the outside. They've left some of it for the interior, which is really nice. It looks as though this is a one piece screen that runs all the way across. It isn't, it's two separate screens. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But I just like the design themes going on in here. So this part of the dashboard is nicely angled towards the driver, and then it angles quite sharply away to the passenger side. Well, it's a lot more interesting than the old Vauxhall Mockers interior, which looked very cluttered and quite uninspiring. Now, let's talk about spec, because um, the Vauxhall Mocker actually comes with an awful lot of equipment, actually. Um, let's talk, because this car is the all-electric version, the Mocha E, let's talk about those trim levels. So the entry-level car is the SE Nav Premium. That comes with a 7-inch screen, which comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, you get uh, climate control, you get LED front and rear lights as well, and you get a rear camera with parking sensors and uh, you also get a seven inch screen for your digital dials. Um, the same goes for the SRI nav as well. That's just the slightly sportier looking car, so it gets lots of black detailing on the outside. You get um, some red detailing as well, larger wheels. Um, this is the Elite nav. So the Elite nav and the top spec car, which is the ultimate edition, they get a 10 inch screen. So this is your 10 inch screen here. And then you also get a 12 inch display for the dials it is i think it is worth upgrading to these um elite nav and ultimate edition models because this screen here better fills the plastic binnacle and this screen here just looks a lot better as well now let's talk about this infotainment system now whilst this interior looks nothing like uh, a Peugeot or a Citroen or a DS, uh, this car does share the infotainment system. And it's a bit of a shame, really. It's a bit of a letdown. It's not the best infotainment system in the world. Um, to, to get to the home screen, you use your three fingers and you press in the screen there. Um, and uh, that is your home uh, screen. The menus are just a little bit all over the place. It's a bit laggy as you can see. Look, this nav is just a little bit slow for my liking. You do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, though, so you probably will be hooking up to this car's uh, sat-nav, well, ho hooking up to the phone's sat-nav system. It's just a bit of a letdown really. It's a bit clunky 
and a bit haphazard, really. Um, the screen here, though, is quite nice. You can't really configure it, but it gives you all the information that you need. And like I say, it fits into that plastic instrument binnacle really well. And uh, the car certainly looks very smart. Um, these seats are super comfortable. It's sort of like a fake leather with uh, fabric on this particular car. Um, you get pretty large door bins. Now this uh, having Peugeot and Citroen heritage, you get this, that car's uh, very small glove box because of the fuse box that's over there. I mean, there's hardly any space whatsoever. And also there are no, it isn't actually suspended this, uh, this uh, uh, glove box lid. So when you open it, it just flops down, which I think is a bit naff actually into the center console. Um, you actually get some physical buttons, which is really nice. And one thing, I know I'm weird, a bit OCD here, but so the volume knob, you can turn the volume and uh, the center actually stays in place. I hate it when you turn the volume knob and this bit turns with it. It just looks a bit scruffy in my mind. This is quite nice, you get a central, um, air vent which i think is quite a nice little design theme you've got air vents uh both two on that side and one over on the driver's side over there again this is very voxel very voxel uh very general motors voxel actually these row of buttons with voxels uh type font um underneath you've got a usb so you can connect your phone to the Apple CarPlay and you've got a 12 volt socket as well. And just like things like the Astra and the Corsa, there's a shark motif there, um, which, has been a which has been an Opel, because of course, uh, Vauxhall's sister company, Opel in Germany. It's a bit of an Opel in joke, that shark. I won't bore you with it now, but it's uh, a bit of a joke that. Um, another row of buttons here, for, uh, you, pretty self-explanatory. This is copied lock, stock and barrel from Citroëns and Peugeots. This is your gear selector. It's like a little rotary dial. You've got your drive mode select there. Um, and then you've got your uh, drive settings. B for extra re uh, brake regeneration. And then a couple of cup holders here. And then a little armrest for a tiny little bit of storage. And this slides forwards as well. So if you want to uh, get very comfortable when you're driving. One thing I would say though, there are a couple, there are a few things that just uh, annoy me a little bit. Um, this, I don't think is particularly well designed. This piano black trim, it's gonna get very uh, scratched within time. Uh, it still makes me laugh. This is an electric car and yet you still get an engine start stop button. And I first saw this on the, uh, Vauxhall, new Vauxhall Corsa. These stalks, they are traditional Vauxhall stalks. They're not Peugeot Citroën ones, but the angle at which they're at, they are v set very, very high, which strange thing to moan about, I know, but whenever I'm driving this car, I look down at the stalks and I think that I've still left the indicator on because it's so high up. You'd expect it to be a little bit more level, wouldn't you? One thing I do like is the steering wheel. Now the Peugeot E2008, you get a tiny little steering wheel and you get that car's uh, eye cockpit um, above the steering wheel. This car is a lot more conventional. It's a proper steering wheel, slightly flat bottomed, but uh, it just gives this car quite a, a traditional feel to it. And I, and I quite like that. Now, let's talk about interior space. Now there's plenty of it in the front. However, in the back, it gets a bit tight. The headroom isn't the bad bit, it's the knee room. Six footers will have their legs jammed into the backs of the front seats. And one strange quirk is there are no grab handles, either in the front or in the back. Strange. The bad news continues in the boot. The back seats don't slide backwards or forwards and there's no ski hatch, but that's not the real disappointment. Yes, there may be some storage space for the charging cables, but the boot's overall size is smaller than its main rivals. Even a Renault Zoe has a bigger boot.
Now, in many ways, this does drive like the Peugeot E2008. I mean, it would do because they are mechanically identical. You get the same 50 kilowatt hour battery and the same 134 horsepower electric motor. Now, that delivers pretty swift acceleration. I mean, the fastest acceleration is when you put the car into sport mode, but it's never neck snappingly fast. Some overtaking moves do require a bit of planning though. For instance, if you're overtaking something at 50 miles an hour, it's not quite as fast as you might be expecting it to be. But like I say, it is pretty good. Now, when it comes to handling, this is very much a cruiser. It's not a sporty SUV. Even the Peugeot E2008 feels just a little bit sharper to drive than this does. It's by no means a bad thing. This is a very comfortable car. Now, the suspension setup, it feels a lot softer than the Peugeot. It feels an awful lot softer than the Volkswagen ID3. Not only is it comfortable, but it's also very, very quiet. Now, you might be thinking an electric car naturally is quiet because there's no engine. In actual fact, electric cars can be a lot noisier than petrol cars because, because you haven't got an engine up front uh, drowning out all the other noises associated with a car driving down the road. It amplifies everything else. So when you're driving an electric car, you tend to notice things like tyre noise and wind noise and creaks and rattles and all those kinds of things. This Mocha E is very quiet. You just get a faint whir from the electric motor and that's it. There's no wind rustle, there's no tyre noise. It's eerily quiet actually and far quieter than a Volkswagen ID3, a car you would expect to be super quiet, but it isn't. The Vauxhall is the quietest, the hushest out of them all. Now, in terms of range, Vauxhall claimed 201 miles, which is five miles less than the equivalent Peugeot E2008, but it's on par with everything else, that cars like a Mazda MX-30, a Mini Electric, um, and a Peugeot E208. What it's not quite as good as is things like the VW ID3, and cars like the 64 kilowatt hour Hyundai Kona Electric and the Kia e Nero. Now that is the claimed figure. What do you actually get in the real world? Well, from a 7 kilowatt home wall box, I've been getting an indicated 197 miles, and this I'm filming this in the summer. Um, in normal driving, I've been getting around 160 to 170 miles, which you may think that's not very good when Vauxhall claims 200, but that is just a claimed figure, don't forget. I mean, 160 to 170 miles isn't brilliant, but it's by no means bad at all. It's way better than cars like the Mazda MX-30 and considerably better than the Mini Electric as well. Now let's talk about those driving modes, shall we? Now you just get a choice of three. You get normal, eco and sport. Sport just sharpens up the throttle response. Eco just throttles everything back to eke out the range. Um, now you do get a B mode and that is extra brake regeneration. Now you don't get paddles behind the steering wheel like you find in cars like the Hyundai Kona Electric where you can have different stages of the brake regeneration. Let me just put it into B mode and yeah, you don't come to a complete halt, but it does recoup a lot of energy and you probably come down to a walking pace. It's not too bad, really. And let's talk about ride comfort. I mentioned it earlier on. Now, if you're stepping out of something like a petrol or a diesel car, you might think the ride in this car is pretty firm. But in comparison to its rivals, this car's got quite a soft suspension setup. Um, when you actually hit a pothole, it does do a quite it does do quite a good job at cushioning the blow. Although this is an electric car, it has got heavy batteries, and occasionally you just the car's mass really does take over and you do thump into things occasionally, particularly on an undulating piece of road, the car can sort of bang into the, the crests and the dips. But like I say, compared to its rivals, this car is pretty comfortable and it's quite a bit more comfortable than an E2008 and an ID3. Now, not only is the ride pretty comfortable, um, he says as he bangs over a few, bumps in the road. 
not only is the ride comfortable, this driving position is great. Now you're able to set this seat really very low and I've got it in its lower setting and you are sort of almost beneath the window line here and you're able to bring the steering wheel out into your chest as well which I quite like. I like the steering column out, I like the seat low, I like my arms bent and um, it feels really comfortable, very sporty and uh, I think I could easily do a long journey in this car. Now if you are looking for a small little SUV, a raised hatchback and it's your first introduction to the world of electric, I don't think you could do much worse than this Vauxhall Mocha-E. It drives really well, it's very comfortable, it's got a good enough range and I think this car looks absolutely fantastic. If you, like me, were never impressed by the old Vauxhall Mocha, cast that car into the history books because this car is a world of difference. Now hopefully you did like this video, if so then give this video a little thumbs up, drop a question in the comments box if you've anything springs to mind and if you haven't done so already please do subscribe to the channel. See you next time.